Joining me now, Donald Trump's former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, thanks for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right, Corey, let's start with this question of the day today. We've heard the accusations from the media, the accusations from the left. In your opinion, President-elect Donald Trump, uh, his tweet, his request to Congress that they front him the money for this, is this backtracking on his promise to make Mexico pay for the wall? Oh, of course he's not backtracking, but what he wants to do is he wants to make sure that we're a country with borders. And if that means you've got to pay for it up front and get uh, Mexico to pay us back afterwards, that's the most important thing. Look, the premise of the wall is very simple. We're going to control our borders. We're going to make sure we know who's coming into our country. And while we can go back and collect the money, which he's going to do from the Mexican government afterwards, the first and most important thing to do is to build the wall so that we stop having criminals come across our border and do things that they're not supposed to do. And that more importantly than just the criminals, it's the amount of drugs that are coming in through Mexico that we need to stop right away. And the most important thing to do, and what he said this entire campaign, and we know he's going to do it, he's going to build the wall on the southern border. Right, that is what he's been saying. That's been one of the hallmarks of his campaign right from the beginning. Let me ask you the all-important how question here. We saw the tweet at the beginning from former Mexican President Vicente Fox. He said in no uncertain terms that, uh, we will, that Mexico will not be paying for the wall. He told Trump to be honest with the taxpayers that we're the ones that would be paying for it. We the taxpayers. In all practicality, if Congress fronts this money to build this wall, how will a President Trump uh, be able to get Mexico to pay us back? Well, as you know, there's a lot of ways to get Mexico to pay it back. When you look at the amount of money that we give to Mexico every year through foreign aid, if you look at the uh, money that goes back uh, to Mexico in a number of different ways, Donald Trump has a number of capacities through the federal government to make sure that the money is repaid to the U.S. government. Look, the bottom line is getting the wall done is the most important thing. If Congress has to front the money in the front end, and you remember, Congress uh, approved this bill uh, over a dozen years ago to actually build the wall, and then they never get it done. It's time to get the wall built. That's the most important thing. Control the borders and then get the money back from the Mexican government through one of two ways, either by reducing the amount of money that we're sending down there or getting them to ultimately write a check to us over a period of years. Right, right. But, uh, but you understand, of course, the, uh, the critics' issue here that this was one of the hallmark promises. It's not a good way to start a presidency going back on a promise that you've made the entire time. And I don't think this is the first accusation of backtracking that President-elect Trump uh, has faced. Not only the Mexican wall, he's facing accusations of backtracking on his promises to repeal Obamacare, to repeal uh, his moratorium on Muslim immigration here to the United States. Three different things that have been three of the biggest draws for people in the, across the entire United States to vote for him in the first place place. Yeah, but you have to remember, look, the, the, the mainstream media has been wrong about Donald Trump since the day this campaign was launched on June 16th of 2015. They said he'd never, you know, uh, file the paperwork. He'd never run for office. He'd never be successful. If he didn't win in Iowa, he'd be out of the race. He couldn't win in the South. He won all the SEC states. The media has been wrong consistently in this race. They've been consistently wrong about Donald Trump, and they're consistently wrong about Donald Trump now. Look what, look what Donald Trump has done when it comes to bills which are out of control for the federal government. You look at the Boeing example, where he said, I'm not going to have the government spend $4.2 billion. Guess what? The CEO of Boeing came in, and said, we're going to lower the price. We're going to make sure that the American taxpayers' dollars are being used efficiently. That's what Donald Trump has said he's going to do, and I think it's time that the American people understand that when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Right. Would you would you categorize Obamacare in that uh, in that same vein? I guess I would ask that even though there's talk about how this is going to be repealed, when it's going to be replaced, how long it might take to roll back Obamacare before uh, a new replacement plan is put into action. Do you consider that not to be backtracking? That's fulfilling his promise to the people. No, he's been very clear about this. And if you look at the if you listen to the incoming members of his team, they said that very clearly they're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. They, you know, Mike Pence was on Capitol Hill last week talking about this it is the priority of this administration coming in. Mike Pence is the one who's leading the charge on this effort on Capitol Hill. He's met with Speaker Ryan. He's met with Mitch McConnell. His senior leadership team is talking about the best ways to do that. Now, are there some provisions that we have to make sure people are taken care of, including if you have pre-existing conditions? Look, that's what this administration has to look at. They have to make sure that those people, and Donald Trump has said this many, many times, we're not going to throw grandma out on the street with no health care. But what we are going to do is repeal and replace Obamacare so that we can have a system in place that isn't bankrupting you know, these companies and bankrupting America. Right, and I think that's one of the things that Republicans agreed with Democrats on from the very beginning, even when the whole Obamacare uh, drama debate was going on, that pre-existing conditions and uh, children or young adults, I should say, being able to stay on their parents' insurance until they're 26 years old, those were actually two provisions that Republicans agreed with Democrats on, and those are two provisions that, to my knowledge, President-elect Trump has no uh, intention of doing away with. Corey, let me pivot uh, a different topic on you just for a second here and ask you, this is a pretty big week when it comes to confirmation hearings, when it comes to setting up the government that President-elect uh, Trump has been creating for the past couple weeks here. One of the most controversial uh, picks, I think, is for Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Do you foresee any problems with that confirmation? 
Jeff Sessions is a good man. He's been a member of the U.S. Senate for uh, almost two decades now or longer. Uh, he's a well-respected man. He, he's a man who has, who has love in his heart. And I think Jeff Sessions is going to be confirmed in the U.S. Senate. You think he's going to be an amazing attorney general. And, you know, I happen to know Senator Sessions very well. I've, I've worked with him closely over the last couple of years. I know the type of person he is, and I think that you're going to see that his colleagues in the U.S. Senate uh, are going to understand what, what I already know, that he's a good man. He's going to make a great attorney general. Right, and address for me for a moment, if you would, the accusations of racism, because that's been something that's plagued Senator Sessions from the very beginning of his political career. He's been called a racist. He's been told that he's enacted racist policies, that he's associated with racist people. President-elect Trump uh, says that this is not true. Close friends like yourself of Senator Sessions says, say this is, couldn't be further from the truth. How do you address those accusations? Because what happens again is the mainstream media wants to malign people without any of the facts. And so, you know, what they want to do is they want to make pejorative statements about people that don't have any facts to it. And then once that narrative starts, it just per it permeates because nobody goes in and fact checks it. The bottom line is Jeff Sessions has been a leader of both as uh, a U.S. attorney down in Alabama and then in the U.S. Senate uh, for minority rights. And there's no question about that. And so, you know, people don't want to look at what his record really is. What's a lot easier, unfortunately, is you get people who go on television, they say things which aren't true about Senator Sessions and then that message gets distributed and all of a sudden he's a racist. The bottom line is anybody who knows Jeff Sessions, including his Senate colleagues, including the people of Alabama, including his friends and his family, know that's the furthest thing from the truth about Jeff Sessions. Right, and I think it's a lot easier to listen to a talking head on TV tell us that uh, Senator Sessions is racist than looking up his record as Attorney General of Alabama and seeing that he was the one who saw the death penalty for the KKK member who murdered a black teenager. It's a lot easier to... Uh, to listen and believe without researching than it is to do that research yourself. Corey Lewandowski, thank you so much for being here today, sir. It was great to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you.